Last weekend on this channel, I released a 32 minute long video reflecting on the history and on my personal experiences with the Sega Dreamcast. The Dreamcast was a revolutionary console back in its day and by far the most impressive system around at one point in time. The only issue with returning to the Dreamcast today is that many of its previous exclusives got ported over to other systems such as the GameCube, the Xbox and the PlayStation 2. Despite this though, a number of great titles still remain exclusive to the Dreamcast to this very day. So, in today's video, we are going to take a look at 10 of the often overlooked true Dreamcast exclusives. Yeah. First on the list is Elemental Gimmick Gear. This game was co-developed by Hudson Soft and Birthday and had been designed using hand-drawn and pre-rendered art for an overhead view during exploration in the world and then switched to 3D graphics during battles. Whilst visually it's not one of the best offerings on this system, for a predominantly 2D game it can still be considered somewhat beautiful. The story itself is a typical RPG style game, where the world is in danger and some social justice warrior has to come along to save it. Most people within the game own a type of egg shaped armour which they use as a type of transport. The main purpose of the game is to destroy some manky tentacle monster which has landed on the planet and has spread over most of the world. The Japanese love their bloody tentacles! Disgusting! Anyway, you'll travel through the world, meet many characters and trawl through many dungeons. The game mixes futuristic elements and robotics with an almost medieval world with magic, potions and all sorts of wonderful elixirs. There's also plenty of puzzles and mini-games which will keep most people playing thoroughly entertained. The music is your typical um, RPG style music, which is very atmospheric relaxing where it needs to be and dynamic in battles and puzzles. Overall, I'd say this is a fine wine of a game, which at present appears to be a game which isn't entirely unaffordable when I checked on eBay. Here with Border Down, we have a delightful example of dynamic and exciting side-scrolling shoot-em-up, which was initially released in Japanese arcades in 2003. This game was developed by G-Rev, or is it Grev? and was released on the Dreamcast only a few months after the arcades in September of 2003, which was actually after Sega's official discontinuation of the Dreamcast. This game features an interesting difficulty dynamic, starting at green being the easiest and then finishing on red, which is the most difficult. On the green level, the player's field lasts longer, however the enemy ships fire less, which means you need to prioritise endurance whereas red simply becomes a battle to survive for as long as you can until the end of the stage has been met. Each time you die, you are respawned in the same place. However, the levels become shorter but more difficult with each respawn. This places pressure on the player to stay alive for as long as possible whilst on the green section. As is typical with most side-scrolling shoot-em-ups, you have a variation of weapons which can be utilised and fired up as enemies are destroyed. These include a forward laser, homing laser and a break laser. The latter of which is used correctly can rack up some huge scores. This fun game is overall well deserved of its reputation. Another exclusive on this platform is Armada. This game was both developed and published by Metro 3D Inc. and was released in North America in October of 1999. It was originally meant to have been a launch title, however, there was last minute delays which meant it wasn't actually released until the day after Thanksgiving in the United States of 1999. This game is a shooter which has RPG elements, which include gaining experience points from defeating enemies, exploration of the universe, completing missions and making improvements to your ship. The game is also an MMO, which was rather advanced at the time and really showcased what the Dreamcast was capable of doing. The game is set in a future where an alien race have destroyed Earth, but there is no real explanation as to the motive behind it. Graphically, the game looks alright for the time. Your sprite remains in the centre of the screen at all times and you can spin around 360 degrees to shoot in whatever direction you choose, firing wherever you like. The music is very sci-fi and feels very appropriate to the game. The sound effects too are suitable and really give a sense of atmosphere. 
you really can get very immersed in this game. There is also some limited voice acting too, which all adds to the feel of the game. This offering is called Outrigger. This was developed by Sega themselves, and was both a first and third person shooter game. It was originally released in the arcade in 1999, however was ported over to the Dreamcast in 2001. You have the option to pick one of four characters, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, for example being a sniper or being able to jump higher than the other characters, or you can run faster, etc. Each character makes up one part of a counter-terrorism organisation named Interforce, which was set up to defend some military research facilities. Another perk of the game is that aside from the four main characters, there is also the ability to create your own character, which is the result from picking from a combination of three weapons. In each stage, you have to kill all the enemies which appear and can collect ammo and extra time which are dropped by defeated enemies. Here we have yet another space shooter, Mars Matrix. However, the difference with this one is that it's a vertical shooter instead. It was developed by Capcom, and like a lot of the other games on this list, it was originally released in the arcade in 2000 and ported over to the Dreamcast later in 2001, where there are some additions made to the game which make the gameplay somewhat more customizable. There are various modes which are available in the arcade version, including arcade mode, a range mode, Elite A and Elite B, which makes fixed variations to the levels, score challenge mode and strategy mode. There's also a shop system, which can purchase upgrades as you progress through the game, and also a gallery to view. The gameplay is quite difficult, and takes a lot of practice to be able to make any kind of meaningful progress. There is a huge amount going on all at the same time, and the background is so detailed, it makes it very hard to see what's going on, and to be able to avoid enemy fire sometimes. Overall, if this is a genre you enjoy playing, then give this a go, provided you have the patience to practice until you play well enough to make some kind of meaningful progress in the game. Cannon Spike is yet another arcade port to the Dreamcast, and is among the very last to be released on the system. This is a multi-directional shooter which was designed by Capcom, and is quite similar to Smash TV and Capcom's other release, Commando. Street Fighter's Kami makes an appearance in this game with her trademark move in this actually behind the Cannon Spike. Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins is another main character available from the start of the game. Mega Man also makes an appearance too, as one of the unlockable characters. There is only one character who hasn't appeared in any other games, and that is Simone, who was specifically designed for this title only. All of the characters are also on wheels, whether they be roller skates, a scooter, or something else. You can mark, shoot, and attack an enemy, and have both long and short range attacks. Movement is very fluid, and the stages vary dramatically from one to another. The visuals and the music are great too. Overall, with most Capcom games, this is a very enjoyable title. D2 is a survival horror game developed by Warp and released on the Dreamcast in Japan in 1999 and the USA in the year 2000. If you have watched previous content on my channel, you would also be aware that this was originally a game planned for the cancelled 3DO M2 console. The Dreamcast release was praised for the storyline and the graphics. The game jumps between third and first person, depending on what type of location you're in. For example, when you're inside buildings, you can look around and interact with objects and pick up collectibles. When you're outside, you explore in third person and encounter RPG style random encounters. During the battles, your character cannot move and can only fire weapons. You can gain experience points which you use to level up and increase health. Overall, this game is interesting enough if this genre appeals to you. Another weird survival horror exclusive is Ill Bleed, which was developed by Crazy Games and released in 2001. Except this game really is very bizarre. I don't actually understand what's going on. You pick your character and seem to be sent into some odd theme park, where you have to carefully explore your surroundings. It would seem the character has been chosen to go on a TV show of sorts, because if they manage to clear the game, they win 100 million dollars. There are traps everywhere, which cause you damage resulting in blood loss or dying of fright. The point of the game is basically slowly making your way through the level, trying your best to avoid traps and rescue your friends. The graphics aren't too bad, but the game has a very cheesy and comical feel to it. 
It's not very standard for a survival horror game in that not only enemies can kill you, but your entire environment has to be thoroughly explored to be able to avoid death. In each stage you receive different boons to be able to navigate the area, for example baseball bats and trap goggles. The game performed very poorly, but has since gained a cult following, a very odd commodity indeed. Omicron, the Nomad Soul, not to be confused with Omicron Percy IX, is an adventure style game which was developed by Quantic Dreams. The game was also released for the PC Master Race on Windows in 1999, however this remains the only console version of the game, still making it a console exclusive, yeah. There's a lot of exploration and interaction with the environment, as well as interesting puzzle elements, fighting segments and first person shooting. One interesting tidbit is that the opening song of the game was performed by David Bowie, of all people. Although I don't know why I'm telling you that, as I don't actually really care. Is there life on Mars? Graphically, the game looks alright, the main sprite moves quite well, but we're not talking Shenmue level of graphics here. The levels all look very futuristic, with robots and hover cars aplenty. The music is very atmospheric and keeps a level of suspense going, and the sound effects all feel very appropriate for what they're trying to portray. The final entry on this list is Macken X, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is a first person hack and slash game which was developed by the people's beloved Atlas. This is yet another game which has been set in the future, in which you control a girl who wields a sentient sword. A group seeking to steal the sword break into the facility where the sword was created, killing the main character's whole family and teacher, as well as various staff. Your character then takes up arms and delivers some swift revenge on those invading the facility. Attacks are generally short range and you have to focus on dodging to miss attacks right from the off and enemies are very diverse as you make your way through the facility. You'll encounter rooms where you have to kill all enemies before you can move on. Graphically, this is definitely one of the nicer looking entries in this list. Although I repeat again, it's nowhere near the level of bloody Shenmue. The music is alright as well, although I can understand why they updated it in the future remakes, as it's not quite as good as it possibly could be. Overall, the game plays well and can be very enjoyable. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was 10 decent exclusive games for the Sega Dreamcast that you may or may not be aware of. Which games would you like to have seen featured on this list and would like to see featured on this channel in the future? Let me know in the comments section. Also, if you are yet to give it a watch, do not forget to watch the last weekend's 32 minute video all about the Sega Dreamcast in which I made. Do not forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to have videos I make projected directly to your phone mobile device thingy. Yeah. Thank you for watching today's video and thank you to all of my fantastic patrons who continue to help and support this channel to grow. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, Richard Clark, Greg Hooper, Harold Webb, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahili, David Mountford, Andrew B. Zansky, Atanas Garcia, Edward O'Reilly, Peter Sidon, and Retail Archaeology. I would really struggle to make these videos without your kindness. If you too would like to support this channel, then make sure to check out my Patreon page. Cheerio.